These are Mindstorm's EV3 robots, the most recent evolution of LEGO's growing line of robotic products. In this video, I'll demonstrate the construction of a mobile solar tracker, a robot capable of following the sun. The basic Mindstorm's education kit includes a large assortment of structural parts, enough to build a range of robots and mechanical devices. This configuration, built from the kit, is the basic tank, a controllable mobile platform. Two powerful motors drive this tank. Accessories for the tank include a third motor, an ultrasonic rangefinder, color and light sensors, a gyro sensor, two touch sensors, and a graphical programming language. The sensors produce a stream of information, data about the tank's orientation, speed, and environment. This feeds to the tank's onboard computer, where code blocks assembled into a program use this information to animate the tank as it navigates through the landscape. I decided to see if I could configure the tank as a solar tracker. With solar panels mounted on the unit, it would find and track the sun. A working model of a Mars rover, ensuring the panels were always pointed at the sun, producing electricity. This is the completed unit being tested with a light source. As you can see, it works. Here is how I constructed and coded this solar robot. I started by mounting two light sensors on the tank. These devices. They are mounted at an angle to one another. These sensors each feed numbers to the computer. The sensor pointed most directly at a light source generates larger numbers than the other one. I use these numbers to control the drive wheels. It is simple to have the tank rotate in place by contra-rotating the wheels. This is the tank rotating. Both wheels are turning at the same speed but in opposite directions. Discussing the code may be the simplest way to explain how data from the light sensors creates rotation. This is the coding environment. Programs are created on a computer and then transferred by USB to the robot's computer. The coding process looks like this. You drag code blocks from the palette and assemble them on the canvas. The code blocks are contained in six tabs at the bottom of the page. The program starts with a start button. I'm going to use a loop. Code inside the loop repeats endlessly until we decide to stop it. This is what a loop block looks like. Next I will insert one light sensor code block and then the second light sensor code block. We will eventually pull data from these blocks. Note each sensor has its own port numbers 1 and 4. Next I insert a math block. Later we will assign values to A and B. Note the minus sign. We will be subtracting these values. Next I insert another math block. Again we will be assigning values to A and B. Note this time we will be multiplying A times B. A comment on the math blocks. A standard math block has two inputs, A and B. I think of these as variables, but that can cause some confusion when A and B appear in the next math block. The inputs in all standard math blocks are labeled A and B. They don't function like global variables. Think of them as inputs to each math block. Next is the move tank block. Among other things, this code block allows us to control the speed and direction of the drive motors. At the moment, they are both set at zero. Now we have to wire the blocks together, feeding data into the program. We will start by connecting the data feed from one of the light sensors to variable A in the first math block. A will have the value of any number coming from the light sensor. 
Next, in a similar fashion, we will connect the data feed from the other light sensor to B in the first math block. B holds values from the other light sensor. This math block will perform the subtraction A minus B. The result of this subtraction is then fed to A on the next math block. Note that I have signed the value minus 1 to B, and this block is multiplying A times B. That becomes A times minus 1. This changes the sign of A. The product of this code block is now fed to one of the motor controllers. Next we go to the first math block and connect its output to the other motor's controller. Can you see how this works? Data from both light sensors comes into a math block where the two numbers are subtracted. The value of this subtraction is fed to two places. One line takes the value directly to a motor controller. The other line changes the sign of this value and takes it to the other motor controller. Their absolute values going to each motor controller are the same, but their signs are different. That is how we obtain contra-rotation in the wheels. A minus sign reverses rotation. One wheel will go clockwise, the other counterclockwise. The motors will stop when the two sensors have the same value. Subtracting the two numbers returns zero, stopping the motors. This occurs when both sensors point directly at the sun. If one sensor detects more light, its number rises, feeding a number other than zero to the motors. If you attempt this, you may find the tank rotates the wrong way. We can fix that in the code. Do you know how? I also experimented with shields and diffusers. Both produce some improvement in response. I attempted to keep this code as simple as possible. There is room for improvement. For instance, some code is needed to ensure the panels are pointed directly at the sun and not directly away from it. Confirming that the sensors are detecting a high ambient light value is one approach. This programming environment is impressive, allowing users to quickly assemble complex programs. But I would like to point out that there is some heavy intellectual lifting going on behind these code block icons. This powerful package was created by teams of programmers, mathematicians and engineers. Code block icons like these represent layers of sophisticated coding. LEGO has brought this all together in a remarkable product. If you're interested in experimenting with entry-level robotics, this Mindstorm package is a good place to start. For more science and technology videos, visit our website, hyloroad.com.